Welcome everybody to Forza Horizon 4 and today we're taking a look at the 1966 Hillman Imp. Now this is a Mark II version of the Imp which was produced between 1965 and 1968 with the car as a whole lasting from 1963 to 1976 with around 440,000 being made. And uh, yeah, in comparison to the likes of the Opel Cadet A which is released alongside this in the car pass, this is really rather unconventional not just in comparison to the Cadet, but also in comparison to other small economy cars from the time as it had a uh, it was the uh, first mass produced British car with the engine block and cylinder head cast in aluminium it also had an opening rear window as you can see here making it easier to access the uh, the rear compartment there behind the seats and uh, yeah the rear seats themselves were also able to be fold down which yeah was also unconventional for uh, small cars at the time. It was usually uh, associated with estate cars that had a uh, fold down rear seat. So, uh, yes, really un unconventional in that regards. And it's also unconventional in the fact that it's a rear engined rear wheel drive car as well. Now, granted, the Beetle was around before this, so uh, yeah, it's not exactly entirely original. But in terms of British cars, it's uh, hardly a conventional uh, layout. And uh, there it is. So, uh, yeah. It uh, was an 875cc inline 4 engine, producing 55 horsepower and 56 pounds feet of torque. So that's actually more power and more torque than the Opel Cadet. But unfortunately this weighs a little bit more at 1,647 pounds. Uh, but yeah, uh, changes over the Mark 1 with this car included an added uh, water pump, a uh, cylinder head with larger ports and valves, along with an additional engine option, a 1 litre inline 4 engine, which this car obviously doesn't have. But yeah, it was an additional option over the uh, original Mark 1, which only had this engine as standard. And uh, yeah, having uh, the engine in the rear obviously means it's got a uh, front boot. So uh, yeah, wouldn't recommend putting things forward of that uh, black train insert there, but yeah, this is still a fairly okay boot, but obviously with the rear hatch window and the uh, fold down rear seats the uh, rear end of the car is probably the more practical area to put luggage in and uh, yeah a lot more unconventional like I said than the Opel Cadet which you know was also released alongside this so uh, yeah really interesting that they've put both of those cars which are in the same class are both small economy cars alongside each other when they're uh, completely uh, opposite ends literally in terms of the engine especially so uh, yeah, I uh, really do find this car interesting. Uh, it's not the, uh, you know, the uh, prettiest car ever, and it's certainly not the uh, fastest. But interior-wise, it's okay. Maybe a little bit less practical than the uh, Cadet because it doesn't have a glove box, for instance. But then again, this was supposed to be a really rather simple car to use and own and uh, maintain. And uh, yeah, compared to the Beetle, this is nearly 20 inches shorter in terms of length, which also helps in the fact that it doesn't weigh as much. So uh, yeah. It's a lack of length and a lack of general size. It really does make it quite a lightweight car, especially in comparison to the Beetle. Therefore, you know, making it more of a uh, city car than anything else. But nonetheless, let's get out onto the open road and see what it can do. So yeah, having the engine at the rear there does obviously make this a more unpredictable car to drive than the uh, likes of the Opel Cadet, which you know did have a hint of understeer, but outside of that, was really rather easy to drive. Whereas this, with its rear engine, is predictably going to have some oversteer like that. Now they did try and uh, cure that with some, uh, you know, unconventional hand uh, suspension parts, and, uh, and not just at the rear, at the front as well. But obviously, you can see it didn't entirely help. So uh, yeah, a little bit unpredictable in terms of handling, but you really have to throw it about to really get it to oversteer like that. In terms of normal driving it's perfectly okay. Now in terms of acceleration, granted it's not as quick as the uh, Opel Cadet purely because this does weigh more and that 9 extra horsepower, 2 extra pounds feet of torque really doesn't make the difference that you'd expect it to. But it's still relatively good in terms of uh, acceleration to 60, not 16, 17.7 seconds which is about a second or so slower than the uh, Opel Cadet and it can do 89 miles an hour which is actually 2 miles an hour more than the Cadet purely because it does have more power and more torque but yeah that's the only advantage over in terms of uh, you know actual performance that this has over the Cadet because outside of the uh, top speed its acceleration is obviously slower and the handling is a little bit less predictable 
making this a uh, yeah a little bit yeah less user friendly than the uh, Opal Cadet, and obviously the uh, more unconventional uh, engineering and uh, layout it was al also useful either. A lot of uh, manu uh, you know mechanics and uh, users didn't really know how to maintain an alloy uh, engine block. So uh, yeah, a lot of cars did end up suffering from reliability issues purely because you know it was a new technology to the masses really. So that didn't help its overall reliability and that did kind of taint its uh, reputation. I mean, come on, it, over 13 years it sold only 440,000, whereas the Opel Cadet in its first three years or so sold more than six, well, nearly 650,000. So yeah, it wasn't anywhere near the success that the Hillman and its owner Roots Group was uh, hoping it would be. As a result, it did a set, uh, eventually sink the company. They were eventually uh, taken over by Chrysler Europe, who were then eventually uh, sold to Peugeot. But, you know, despite not being quite the success uh, everyone expected it to be, the unconventional uh, parts of it certainly weren't uh, unsuccessful because, you know, folding rear seats, rear hatch, uh, and uh, alloy uh, uh, engine block certainly did become more conventional into the 70s and afterwards. So, uh, yeah, kind of a revolutionary car in some respects, to be honest. And uh, yeah, considering how small the car actually is, like I said, it's nearly 20 inches smaller than a Beetle, is that mm, is nonetheless still a relatively practical car. Certainly usable, certainly can fit four people in it, and uh, yeah, fair amount of uh, yeah, space in the back when you take those rear seats down as well. So yeah, overall, a really rather uh, weird addition to the game, really. Because obviously we've never had Hillman before in a previous uh, Forza game, and uh, yeah, that goes for plenty of other uh, car manufacturers as well from the uh, 50s and 60s that were eventually swallowed up by bigger uh, manufacturers. So uh, yeah, I do hope that they uh, bring more oddities like this to the game, especially from Britain, because like I said, there were dozens and dozens of car manufacturers back in the 50s, 60s, and even the 70s that don't really get a look in in racing games and uh, yeah it would be nice to have more of them quite frankly and uh, yeah even if they aren't going to be as successful as uh, you know other cars from the time because obviously we do have the likes of the uh, the Mini from the 60s on this game which was obviously a far more successful car than this which this car was actually competing against it would be nice to have some more of those uh, more ordinary cars that weren't quite as successful because yeah it does give an interesting look at into the time that they were around Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.